So Sketch recently launched a new feature called Smart Layout. It basically allows you to take static elements and turn them into dynamic elements that change with the content. For example, if you change the text of a button, now its padding and its spacing can also change to adapt to that. This can even be used for more complex examples like tooltips, cards, and lists. If you're familiar with the Patty plugin or the Animal Layout tools, you might already have some idea of how this works. Plugins like the Patty plugin have existed for a little while, but this is the first time we've seen this natively in any of the design tools. It looks like something similar is coming for Figma and XD, but for now we'll take a look at how it works in Sketch. We'll look at what you can do with the Smart Layout tools, but we'll also look at when it might not be the best use case to use something like this. Here are a few examples I've put together that use Smart Layout. You can download them below or create your own. The first thing to note is that you can only use Smart Layout with symbols. You can see that each of these elements is a symbol, and they all already have Smart Layout enabled. We'll take a look at these more in depth in a second, but first we'll create a new Smart Layout button from scratch. So I'll just draw out a rectangle, and then I'll create some type inside of it. I'll line up the horizontal padding so it's the same on each side. And then I'll hit Create Symbol. I'll rename it to Button. And here you can see there's a new option for Layout. You can select it to be anchored to the left, center, or right. Or if it's something that expands vertically, you can anchor it to the top, vertically, or the bottom. I'll anchor it to the center for now and hit Create. If we go to the overrides and create a long text string for the title, the button expands to keep that same padding. This can definitely save you tons of time to resize buttons, but there is one drawback. If you have buttons that are aligned in different ways within the larger layout, you'll have to create different symbols for them. So that's why up here I have three symbols for the primary button and three symbols for the alternate button. If I change these all to have the same title, you can see how the left, center, and right alignment works. So they keep the same dimensions, but they're anchored to a different point as they resize. And then I'll click into this card layout quickly and we'll see how that's structured. So when you're looking at a symbol, you have the layout options on the right. You can see none, horizontal, and vertical. And then if you have horizontal or vertical selected, you can choose the anchor point. I have this one anchored to the top right now. So we'll jump back out to the main artboard and then I'll create just a single letter as this text field. So rather than expanding horizontally, it expands and contracts vertically. Now this should give you a basic sense of how the smart layout tools work, but it can definitely get a little more complex and a little more useful. For example, I have two buttons that are left aligned within this card, but I wanna hide one of those buttons. Right now they're aligned to the left, so I'll hide that left alternate button. And you can see once it's hidden, the other button snaps into place. It can also be useful for combo buttons where you have multiple options. If you have to update or change the options, you can just hide and show them. If you have elements in a larger layout that's mostly static, this can work really well, but when you start combining some of the responsive tools with some of the layout tools, it can get a little weird. So I'll jump into this card and give you a sense of how it's structured. The image is pinned to the top left and right with a fixed size. The text elements are also fixed to the top, and then the button group is fixed to the bottom. So if we resize this, it still looks good as we resize, but you can see if we make it really wide horizontally, we now have a larger gap between the text and the buttons. If I update it when it's only resized horizontally, it'll maintain that gap. I'll undo. And then you can see if I update it when it's resized vertically, it'll actually snap back to the original sizing. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of as you have the overlap between responsive elements and smart layout elements. And then here's one final thing we'll look at. I have a really short two item list, and then there's another similar one. The first thing we'll see is these are separate list items, and then this is a list group. So that means they'll react slightly differently. If I update this text, only the item updates, but then if I jump over here and update this text, the whole list will resize. So this can be really useful if you have a really long list and you want everything to continue to stay aligned, but you have to make sure the overall list group is also a symbol. There's another way that we can make sure that these symbols resize exactly as we want them to. You can see when I break this text down to a single line, the divider gets extremely close to the profile image. However, if I do it on this one, 
it keeps that 16 pixel margin that we always want to maintain. So let's see how these are structured a little bit differently. I'll jump into this one. The symbol is called list item. And then if we look at the layers on the left, it's just four separate layers. However, if we jump over to this one, the profile image and the text are in a group together. So that means if this goes down to one line, the horizontal spacing is now based off of the largest element, which is the profile image rather than the text. So hopefully these few examples give you enough to start creating your own designs with Smart Layout. I'll also drop a link in the notes below to some of the sketch documentation that shows you some of the advanced features of how you can use Smart Layout. Thanks for tuning in. It's exciting to see design tools become a bit more responsive to the way we actually design. Feel free to drop in a comment about your thoughts on the Smart Layout tools, or even just something that you've created with them. As of recording this, most of my videos are about Envision Studio, but I'm planning on recording more videos about Sketch, other design tools, and even just some general design concepts. If you found this useful and want more design tutorials, make sure to hit like and subscribe. That'll help you and other designers find more videos like this.